This is the dried fruit or seed pod of the Joshua tree. This is the intact pod, which I assume has many seeds in it. This is what you often see from the highway or when hiking as a cluster of these things on the branches of the Joshua tree. One thing I wanted to show you here is one way to tell if there are seeds inside is to just shake it and you get a sound much like those you get from gourds to make music. Let's see if this will pick up on the camera. So we know there are plenty of seeds within this particular pod. This is the inside of the Joshua tree fruit. This fruit is dried, which means it has been on the tree for some time. And the moths are gone, and the birds have been pecking at this thing, so that it appears as a brown, crusty shell much like a large walnut. So immediately on opening this, we found two seeds, which are the characteristic somewhat concave black seeds. Clearly these were seeds left over after the larvae left. So we'll pick them out. And as you'll recall, the fruit of the Joshua tree is actually the ovary portion of the flower that was remained as the fertilized portion of the flower that provided, here's another seed, that provided sustenance for the larvae of the yucca moth, the Tegatecula synthetica. Oh, there are more seeds in here. I'm doing this for the as we go along. I didn't realize there were more. Se oh my goodness! Look at this. So this fuzzy, crusty stuff is just part of the shell. So this is loaded with seeds. So if you could imagine this was an apple, this would be the core area where all the seeds are. This area would be the fleshy part, the part that one eats with an apple, and this would be the skin. So we're essentially right in the core, and we're just finding tons of seeds. This is my first time working with this, so I didn't expect there to be anything left, especially when I opened it. More seeds in here. Tons of seeds. Looks like there's some over here on the side. So the seeds, apparently, are on the sides here. This central portion would be the core. And the seeds are here, so these must be where the ovules were before they were fertilized and became seeds. So these are the locules, then, that house all of these seeds.
Boy, this is just loaded. didn't expect this many and this would be the bottom of the shell of the dried fruit after the seeds have been removed So what happens here is that once the larva has left and the fruit dries out on the Joshua tree, then these stay on and birds and rodents will climb up the tree and crack these open for the seeds and then some seeds will fall on the ground. Birds will peck these things open as well and extract the seeds and seeds will fall on the ground and other animals can partake of the seeds, ingest them, move away from the Joshua tree and then eject them in feces. Hopefully at this point the seeds will be protected to the extent that they will in turn start growth and develop into a new Joshua tree. So this is what's inside of this. The entire fruit intact. These are the Joshua tree seeds up against the ruler and they appear to be about three-eighths of an inch in diameter. These are some of the seeds that probably represent about 80% of what I got out of one half of the seed pod or the old dried fruit of the Joshua tree. As noted before, they measure approximately three eighths of an inch in diameter. And particularly these appear to have been eaten out some, these horseshoe shaped ones, like this one. So maybe these were the ones that the larvae ingested portions of, whereas the seeds that are intact were reserved for propagation of the Joshua tree all part of that coevolution process that exists between the yucca moth and the Joshua tree. But over here you can see that the seeds actually are encased in these brown coverings, especially this one. So apparently since it's encased in that, that was actually where the ovule was in the ovary of the plant. And several of these seeds were encased in these. And as you can see here, there are still some seeds remaining in the pod here. Again, these seeds are encased in this sort of uh, fibrous covering which I'm sure used to be the ovule. So the seeds are on either side of what we were calling the core and all up and down the sides are these seed areas. And here are the fibrous surroundings of the seeds. So the seeds are in this circular column on either side of the center. So as you can see here, this fibrous covering, a seed was sitting right in the middle of that. And this is equivalent to this. 
because there are seeds stacked up from here to here. And you can see how they could be nestled down on either side of the central raffae. 